The Nightly Business Report. Good evening. Tonight, Sri Lanka's banks have amassed 3.7 billion US dollars in balances with foreign financial institutions, a significant increase amid a currency crisis. The Asian Development Bank has disbursed $358.3 million to Sri Lanka up to August this year, slightly ahead of the International Monetary Fund. The final trading day of the week saw the mostly positive trend of the Colombo Stock Exchange reinforced as both the ASPI and S&P SO20 ended in the green. And the Dow registered its fourth record high in five days after stronger than expected monthly retail sales and a rally in chip stocks powered by TSMC's upbeat forecast. From Studio 24, here's Anuradhi Vikramasinghe. A very good evening and thank you for joining us. According to official data, by the second quarter of 2024, Sri Lanka's banks have amassed $3.7 billion in balances with foreign financial institutions, a significant increase amid a currency crisis. The central bank noted in its financial stability review that the banking sector is maintaining a substantial amount of foreign currency funds with these institutions to effectively manage liquidity risks. Since 2021, Sri Lanka's banking sector has significantly enhanced its balances with foreign financial institutions to address liquidity needs in foreign currency, particularly in an environment marked by prevailing FCY liquidity deficit in domestic forex market. By the third quarter of last year, these balances peaked at over $4 billion US dollars but have since declined. Banks have consistently reduced their foreign borrowings with FCY borrowings dropping further as many institutions settled their obligations during this period. By the end of the second quarter this year, FCY borrowing stood at $836 million. As part of its debt restructuring efforts, Sri Lanka repaid some government dollar borrowings in rupees, prompting banks to purchase dollars to cover their liabilities, including customer deposits as their open positions unexpectedly widened. Additionally, banks were compelled to settle maturing credit lines and other borrowings following a downgrade in Sri Lanka's credit rating, which exacerbated forex shortages stemming from money printed to lower the policy rate. The Asian Development Bank has dispersed $358.3 million to Sri Lanka up to August this year, slightly ahead of the International Monetary Fund, which gave $334 million in budget support loans. The World Bank has provided significant financial assistance to Sri Lanka, disbursing $239.8 million as part of a broader support package. This funding, along with the budget support loans from the both Asian Development Bank and the World Bank, is linked to Sri Lanka's ongoing IMF program initiated last year. Budget support loans are particularly valuable as they can be utilized to repay maturing debt without contributing to imports or exacerbating the current account deficit, providing that existing loans are settled. This mechanism allows for better financial management in challenging economic times. In addition to the contributions from the World Bank and the Asian Development Bank, Japan has also played a role in supporting the country's economy. Japan disbursed $20.1 million through its previously post loan disbursements following Sri Lanka's sovereign default. Furthermore, Japan has provided $1.3 million grant, underscoring its commitment to assist the countries during this difficult period. Overall, Sri Lanka received a total of $1,005.7 million in foreign support, comprised of $11.3 million in grants and $994.4 million in loans. This financial backing is crucial as the country navigates to complexities of economic recovery and strive to stabilize its financial situation. A report from the Finance Ministry revealed that only 53% of Sri Lanka's welfare budget was utilized in the first eight months of this year under the previous government. This highlights significant gaps in the allocation and use of funds intended to support social programs during that period. The Finance Ministry recently released pre-election budgetary position report for this year and indicates that only 563.4 billion rupees of the allocated 1055.7 billion rupees for the welfare budget has been utilized in the first eight months of this year. This welfare budget is indebted to support programs related to social welfare, social security, education, health, nutrition and development assistance. In an effort to address pressing social needs, the previous government increased the welfare budget by 15.3% this year compared to the actual expenditure of 915.4 billion rupees in last year. The increase was supported by the International Monetary Fund, which urged the location for more resources to assist the poor and vulnerable populations through improved targeting methods. According to the report of the 563.4 billion rupees spent in the first eight months, 
112.7 billion rupees were allocated to Aswasma poverty alleviation program. Additionally, 9.5 billion rupees were directed towards the school nutrition food program, 4.4 billion rupees for school textbooks and uniforms, and 24.2 billion rupees for fertilizer subsidies. Sri Lanka's new government has come under fire over a reported move state-run Ceylon Electricity Board to continue to purchase fuel without competitive bidding and with the deal struck with Ceylon Petroleum Corporation. Ceylon Electricity Board has decided not to go ahead with the competitive procurement of the fuel but to strike a deal with Ceylon Petroleum Corporation, reversing decision by the early administration to move for open tendering. The report said the CEB had decided not to go for competitive bidding since there was no substantial price variation among different suppliers. The last government, towards the end of its term, had decided to call for bids from different fuel suppliers such as the CPC, LIOC and Sinopec for fuel supply after multiple fuel distributors were established. A senior CEB official said that the state-run utility provider will issue a clarification today without elaborating. A heated debate erupted on social media with some users calling on President Disanayaka to use competitive bidding for fuel. Ambassador of Sri Lanka to the Kingdom of Jordan, JADS Priyangika Vijay Gunasekara, engaged in discussions with the chairman of the Alt Salt Chamber of Commerce of Jordan, Saad Bazbaz Al Hayari, on further enhancing trade and economic cooperation. The Alt Salt is one of the oldest chambers in the Arab world with approximately 5,000 members. Ambassador Vijay Gunasekara emphasized that fostering two way trade and tourism sector cooperation between Sri Lanka and Jordan is one of the key strategies of Sri Lanka to enhance economic cooperation with Jordan. The ambassador pointed out Sri Lanka's great potential to introduce a vast array of new Sri Lankan products to the Jordanian market in addition to the traditional exports such as tea, coconut and rubber. She also invited a Jordanian business delegation to visit Sri Lanka to understand the business environment and the multitude of avenues and opportunities available in the country. The two sides agreed to organize joint economic activities to enhance all all levels of economic cooperation between the two countries. A second short commercial break now. Market updates on the other side. This is the Nightly Business Report. Welcome back to the Nightly Business Report. The final trading day of the week saw the mostly positive trend of the Colombo Stock Exchange reinforced as both the ASPI and S&P SL20 ended in the green. That puts us at a weak but certain net positive at closing as the aggregate for the trading week that comes to a close today. There are hopes of maintaining this positivity through to the following week. For more on today's trading sessions, we have with us Netli Fernando from First Capital Securities. Thank you. The ASPI commenced the short week on a negative note recording at 12,246 as the market experienced a mixed sentiment as, as investors booked profits primarily on banking sector shares. However, as the week progressed, plantations, tourism and apparel sector shares witnessed revitalized interest on the back of active investor participation. Towards the midweek, uh, the market continued to witness heavy sideways movement as the investors adopted a mixed approach. Towards the latter part of the week, the market attained to ease on the green zone at 12,313, gaining 23 points. Notably, the ASPI gained 67 points during the week. Turnover was dominated by blue chip stocks, apparel companies and banking sector shares during the week as the turnover during the day stood at LKR 1.95 billion, 10.3% lower than the monthly average of LKR 2.2 billion. Capital goods sector, consumer services, telecommunication and plantation sectors experienced higher involvement during the week as they dominated well throughout the week. And with the week wrapping up, how exactly did both indices fare in its specifics? Well, to get a concise look back, we have with us Anjali Matthews from First Capital Holdings. 
Today, the Colombo Stock Exchange experienced another day of gains, closing the day in green, as the ASPI gained 23 points to close at 12,313, marking a 0.18% increase from the previous day. And similarly, the S&P SL20 index also experienced gains, gaining 14 points to close at 3,627, marking a 0.38% increase from the previous day. Investors particularly maintained positive sentiment towards the plantation sector. The top contributors towards the positive index include CT Holdings, Central Finance Company, and Hatton National Bank. Turnover also remained steady, closing at rupees 2 billion, marking an 11.2% increase from the previous day, while the diversified financial sector dominated turnover by 33%, followed by the food, beverage, and tobacco and capital goods sectors jointly contributing to 29% of overall turnover. Overall, the top gainers of the day were Nation Lanka Finance, Industrial Asphalt PLC, Blue Diamonds Jewelry, and Oda Pusalawa Plantations. Meanwhile, the top losers of the day were Tess Agro Non Voting, Selinka Holdings, and the Fortress Results. Gold prices surged to a record high in Asian trade today, driven by heightened safe haven demand as the U.S. presidential election approaches and concerns grow over the outcome of the closely contested race. Additionally, speculation surrounding an interest rate cut by the European Central Bank provided further support for the precious metal. Spot gold climbed by 0.4% to reach a record high of $2,705.26 per ounce, while December gold futures increased by 0.5%, trading at two. $2,720.15 per ounce. The rise in gold prices comes despite strong U.S. retail sales and robust labor market data, which have strengthened expectations that interest rates in the U.S. may decrease at a slower pace in the coming months. This complex backdrop highlights gold's enduring appeal as a safe haven asset amid economic uncertainty and geopolitical tensions. Investors are increasingly turning to gold as a means of preserving value during these volatile times. Oil prices experienced a modest increase in Asian trade today, supported by supportive U.S. inventory data. However, they are on track for their worst week since early September due to rising concerns over weak demand. Brent crude futures for December delivery rose by 0.2% to $74.60 per barrel, while West Texas intermediate crude futures also gained 0.2%, reaching $70.32 per barrel. Despite the uptake, prices received little boost from China's gross domestic product data, which showed that the country's economy grew largely as expected in the third quarter. However, recent stimulus measures from China have fallen short of expectations, dampening market sentiment. Additionally, a strong U.S. dollar has limited the recovery in oil prices as robust U.S. economic data has reinforced expectations that interest rates may decrease at a slower pace in the coming months. The slight gains in oil prices today follow reports indicating a decline in U.S. inventories over the past week, providing some positive signals regarding demand from the world's largest fuel consumer. Central bank data shows the Sri Lankan rupee is seeing yet more appreciation against the US dollar compared to Wednesday. The buying and selling rate has seen productions in similar fronts. Now let's look at how the Sri Lankan rupee is faring against other global currencies. Let's take a short commercial break. This is the Nightly Business Report. Welcome back to the Nightly Business Report. The recent alleged incident involving pilots in Sri Lankan Airlines flight UL607 has led to the downgrade of its safety ratings by airline ratings. 
airlineratings.com a leading airline rating site has downgraded sri lankan airline safety rating from 7 stars to 6 following a concerning incident involving one of its captains reports indicate that during a 10 hour flight from sydney to colombo aboard an airbus a330 the captain allegedly locked his female co-pilot out of the flight deck the incident occurred on flight us 607 with the aircraft registered as 4RALR en route when the first officer stepped out of the cockpit for a brief restroom break upon her return she found the cockpit door locked and the captain reportedly refused to let her back in despite the situation the flight continued safely and landed in colombo without incident after the landing the officer filed a complaint indicating that disagreement between her and the captain had led to the lockout in response the airline grounded the captain and sri lanka civil aviation authority has initiated an investigation into this matter further reports revealed that the situation escalated to a point where a senior cabin crew member had to step in utilizing the communication system to urge the captain to unlock the door and allow the co-pilot to return to her seat the airline's commitment to safety and proper conduct has been closely monitored as this investigation unfolds The Central Depository Systems Limited and Sampath Bank PLC have entered into a significant partnership to enhance the efficiency of dividend disbursement services for listed companies on the Colombo Stock Exchange. CDS and Sampath Bank are joining forces to enhance the capital market infrastructure and improve the experience for listed companies and investors. This collaboration is formalized through a service agreement which Sampath Bank will offer its total dividend solution via the cash management suite under transaction banking, allowing CDS to utilize the solution for its clients. The total dividend solution will enable companies listed on the Colombo Stock Exchange to manage their dividend payouts seamlessly. It provides multiple disbursement options including electronic fund transfers, check processing and other customized methods. This partnership marks a significant an advance money the dividend distribution process enhancing investor relations for listed companies mr rajiv bandaranayake who is the ceo of the colombo stock exchange emphasized the importance of this collaboration stating this initiative offers listed companies and their shareholders a modern efficient solution it allows companies to concentrate on their care operations while simplifying administrative processes ms ayodhya idavela perera managing director of sampad bank expressed pride in partnering with cds to deliver a seamless and efficient dividend payout solution The Commercial Bank of Ceylon has announced the launch of host-to-host -host payment services for corporate clients as the latest addition to ComBank Digital Enterprise Solutions, the bank's comprehensive and powerful suite of cutting-edge digital banking solutions for SMEs and corporates. H2H is an automated and secure solution that integrates directly with the corporate client's enterprise resource implant system and is designed to facilitate the electronic transfer of data between banks and their corporate clients. This technology eliminates the need of manual processes involved in payment transfers and reconciliations, making overall transaction management more efficient and reliable. An automated solution for high-volume data transfer between banks and corporate clients without having to sign into a banking app or web interface, the H2H solution allows clients to generate and transfer files in standard industry formats such as XML or CSV through a secure channel established between the client's ERP system and the bank's H2H platform. The system supports a variety of ERP platforms including SAP, Microsoft Dynamics, Oracle Cloud, Odoo, and open source ERP systems. <laughs> Sussit Samaravira has been appointed to Group General Manager of Kanora Hotels Private Limited after a remarkable tenure at the Grand Candian Hotel since its inception. With over 40 years of experience in the hospitality industry, Samaravira is a veteran hotelier dedicated to the advancement of the sector in Sri Lanka. His commitment to the profession is evident from his leadership role as Chairman of the Institute of Hospitality Sri Lanka branch, where he served three consecutive terms from 2017 to 2020. Throughout his illustrious career, Samaravira Vera has held key positions in various prestigious establishments across multiple countries, including the Oasis Club in Adma in Abu Dhabi, Novotel Center Hotel in Abu Dhabi, and Sofitel Dubai. His extensive experience and dedication to the industry have made him a valuable asset and a respected figure among his peers. The chairman of the group, Garmini Vera Ratna, along with his entire staff at the Grand Canyon Hotel, extended their heartfelt congratulations to Samar Vera and wish him continued success in his new role. David Pierce Renewable Energy Limited successfully completed yet another major solar energy project at the manufacturing complex of David Pierce Motor Company Limited in Ramna Hambantota district. 
The solar installation at the DPSCL facility features an impressive capacity of 750 kilowatts power, supported by a 620 kilowatt inverter, and covers an area of 43,000 square feet. This project underscores DPRE's commitment to delivering innovative renewable energy solutions for Sri Lanka. With over 40 years of trust and innovation from David Peaty's group, David Peaty's renewable energy has established itself as a leading force in the country's green energy movement. The company offers a diverse range of solar solutions, including on-grid, off-grid and hybrid systems catering to households, businesses and the corporate and industrial sectors. The primary goal of RANA project is to fulfill DPMCL's electricity requirements while also contributing surplus energy to the national grid. It is expected to generate approximately 950 megawatts of energy annually for the grid. In addition to utilizing cutting-edge technology, David Peters Renewable Energy ensures island-wide accessibility by providing 24-7 customer support and real-time online monitoring, guaranteeing an uninterrupted power supply for all clients. Going in for a short commercial break now, we'll be right back with Global Updates. This is the Nightly Business Report. Welcome back to the Nightly Business Report. Most Asian stocks were muted today amid uncertainty over U.S. interest rates and the upcoming presidential election, while Chinese shares turned positive on data showing the economy grew as expected. Technology stocks clocked relatively smaller losses, while chipmaker TSMC rallied to record highs on stronger-than-expected third-quarter earnings. Regional markets took muted cues from a mostly flat overnight session on Wall Street. While investors did cheer signs of resilience in the U.S. economy, this enthusiasm was largely undercut by bets on a smaller upcoming interest rate cut by the Fed Reserve. Chinese shares had logged heavy losses earlier in the week after Beijing's signals on more stimulus measures inspired limited confidence given that the government still left investors wanting for more details on the planned measures. The Dow registered its fourth record high in five days after stronger-than-expected monthly retail sales and a rally in chip stocks powered by TSMC's upbeat forecast. The Dow registered its fourth record high in five days on Thursday after stronger-than-expected monthly retail sales and a chip stock rally powered by Taiwan Semiconductor's upbeat forecast. The Dow added more than a third of a percent, while the S&P 500 and Nasdaq ended essentially flat. Shares of Taiwan Semiconductor Manufacturing, the world's largest contract chip maker, gained nearly 10 percent after the company beat Wall Street estimates for profit and forecast a jump in fourth quarter revenue driven by demand for artificial intelligence chips. That helped propel other chip stocks, including AI trade favorite and TSMC customer NVIDIA. The chip rally came just days after a downbeat forecast from chip equipment maker ASML sparked a global stock sell-off. In other movers, shares of Netflix, down 2 percent at the close, rose more than 3 percent in after-hours trading after the streaming service said it picked up 5.1 million subscribers in the third quarter, topping Wall Street estimates by more than 1 million users. And shares of Travelers Companies and Blackstone Group both advanced after the insurer and the money manager posted third-quarter profit, which beat market expectations. Nestle announced it is revamping senior leadership and its operating structure, cut its full-year sales outlook and reported worse-than-expected nine-month organic sales after failing to raise volumes amid continued price hikes. Nestle is making some big decisions as sales flag. The Swiss giant on Thursday reported that growth fell short of forecasts. It was just 2% over the first nine months of the year. Sales volumes also failed to match expectations after the firm hiked prices again. An executive said rising costs for coffee and cocoa were among the pressures faced by the Kit Kat and Nescafe maker. Both have touched repeated record highs over the past two years. Now the company says it's going to revamp its senior leadership and operating structure in response. It also cut its sales outlook for the year to just 2% growth, down from 3% in earlier forecasts. New Chief Executive Laurent Frex said consumer demand had weakened and was likely to stay soft over the coming months. 
He took over in September after predecessor Mark Schneider was ousted following several previous quarters of weak growth. Among changes, Nestlé will reduce the size of its executive board. It will also merge regional units, including its Latin America and North America divisions. Next week, analysts will be watching rival Unilever to see if it fares any better. The UK firm is forecast to see sales volumes grow by over 3% while raising prices less than Nestlé. And that's all from us here at the Nightly Business Report. Join us again on Monday for more key updates across the business globe. Until then, I'm Anuradhi Vikramasinghe. Thank you very much for watching. Have a great weekend.